Welcome back to Let's Play Andy and Lily. Greetings one and all to the most cursed, most cringiest corner of the internet. To YouTube channel content creator, actively leading everyone. The move the analog and digital world. We welcome good evening wonderful dice of all lights. I am Lunar D8. So let's play Chaos Head Noah. We're going to get the Nanami path in ending this time. Bah! OBS chance you are just fine. Let's hop into this. Double checking OBS more. Okay, we need the positive delusion. Okay, so what answers do I need? It's no, yes, no, yes, yes. Okay, so no, yes, no, yes, yes. This progress, non related intermission will appear during the story. The skip mode will be disengaged. The game will branch in chapter 6. Well, that's a bit earlier than the one we me. Grimmy did chapter 8, so. No, yes, no, yes, yes. Okay, I like the big sister types. No. Yes. No. Should be yes, yes, but let me double check. Okay. You're cute, I'll admit that. Yes. I want to kiss you. Yes. We have, un we have unlocked Alabama. Okay, fine. If you're that insistent, I'll kiss you. I'm a man, you know. I might not find an hobby attractive at all, but I always wanted to kiss a Okay, that's kind of creepy, man, but still. Onward to Sweet Home Alabama, path, story, for the Andy and Lily joke. And everyone's like, there's more to that game than that. I'm like, I know, but that's, that's usually what everyone memes about. I guess even my little sister would count. Well, that's... I'm glad we didn't go further with that. Jesus. Okay, let's see what our new scenes are in the game. Though I'm kind of worried about the, how the uh, game's going to end. Because initially when we did the Remy path, which is the only character path we've done so far, I was expecting not terrible things to occur. Instead... Kozway and Senna both died. And Remy might be dead. I'm just saying it got a bit dark. So... I have a feeling that all six of these character paths... Heck, maybe the final happy, happy ending of the story is also going to be not a very happy thing. So let's see how depressing this story can be. As we get visual novel epilepsy. And again, people are like, well, maybe you could just splice in the scenes that's just all the new content instead of making us sit through all this. And I'm like, I refuse to do anything that's professional. I'm just doing this the way I fucking want to. Maybe at some point I could just make a save here. I will leave five blank. See what that says. Tips. Okay. We've already seen that. I could probably just look up on Google all the different diagnoses for that.
And everyone's like, well, if you're doing it this way, why would anyone want to watch this video? And I'm like, I don't know. If you do, that's cool. I just don't. I'm just not going to edit anything, though. Unless I absolutely have to. Nanami Nishijo was humming as she fiddled with her phone. She was in a good mood today. Today she finally succeeded in dragging her brother out and making him buy a phone. She even put the Joe Froggy strap on it. She was satisfied, like she'd completed a difficult mission. It's been so long since I got to go out somewhere with my big brother, too. To Nami, it was a new experience. She wasn't sure how many times it actually happened in the past. She tried to remember, but the memories were so hazy she couldn't remember a single time. They were brother and sister, but the two of them had never gone anywhere together. Well, maybe it's nice to take him out on a date once in a while. Now, if only he'd ditch his gloomy personality and be a little bit more considerate. As she waited at Scramble Crossing the light change, she typed a quick message to her brother on her phone. The light changed, the crowd began to walk. Nanami went with the flow, eyes glued to her phone. There were so many people that you could really walk while I was sending a text. Her shoulder collided with the passing solid man and she almost fell over. The solid man glared at her. She bowed and put her phone into her bag. Nami decided to focus on walking and send a message after she got on the train. Huh? She suddenly saw the face she recognized coming out of the station's turnstiles. Oi! Rimi san! Oi, Rimi! <laughs> Rimi Sakahara stared at her in shock. Then, for some reason, Rimi looked away awkwardly. Nanami ignored her and began to walk over. Rimi san! It's been too long. Yeah, yeah, it has. She was being strangely unfriendly. Was she going on a date with someone? Nanami had to wonder. If nothing else, she certainly wasn't here to go on a date with her brother. After Nanami had said goodbye to him, he headed straight home. How's my brother since then? My brother, her brother hated going outside and hated talking to people. Maybe he hadn't really talked to Rimi that much. Then she tilted her head confused. There was a strange sensation that something was wrong with her memory. Huh? Since then? Since when? Rimi didn't say a thing. She was looking awkward with a big TV above the crossing. They were showing a promo for Carrera Omura's new single. Nanami tried to search her memories about Rimi, about Rimi and her brother's relationship. She knew these things. There was no way she couldn't know them. Just a moment ago when she had seen Rumi, the name had come to her instantly, and she called out to her. But for some reason, she couldn't remember much of anything about her. When did I meet you anyway? Why do I know your name? She tried frantically to search her memories, but it was like part of them was just missing. It wasn't even on the tip of her tongue or anything. The memory were simply plain gone. A blink. Thinking about it made her feel sick, and for some reason... There was a sense like something pressing on her heart. Aw, oh, come on, Nana, how could you forget? The awkwardness disappeared from Yumi's face and was replaced with a bright smile. We met through Taku, right? You know, at school, you saw me with your brother and couldn't believe your eyes. You were like, wow, my brother had a girlfriend. It's the end times. Earth is doomed. Huh? Huh? Did, did I say that? Yeah, you did. You were so stunned, I still remember. When she heard this, it kind of felt like something like that did happen. But there was also a sense that no, it never had. Nanami wasn't completely satisfied, but she quickly decided it didn't matter. So, have you seen my brother lately? Sure have. We're classmates. But he doesn't go to school often, right? Give him a kick in the butt for me. Tell him to stop staying in his room all day. He doesn't listen when I tell him. <laughs> Roger. Okay. I'm gonna head home. 
Mom gets mad if I'm out late. Do you have a mom? Yeah. See you later. Rimi was a little... Waved a little at Niami as she... Head toward the station. Still, she still couldn't remember anything about Rimi. And it was weird that Rimi wasn't wearing her Sume uniform at this time of day. But, there was something bothering her even more. Could Rimi be my brother's girlfriend? Not a chance, right? The idea seemed so unrealistic. Her brother getting a girlfriend was so unlikely. It would be a sign of the end times, she said to herself. Ironically, it is a sign of the end times. Back to epilepsy via stories. I wonder if she can have me call it an Ami instead. Oh, okay. That still sounds like it hurts. Nom nom nom, popsicle. And again, I'm glad I didn't understand the whole delusion mechanic. That way we did the neutral path. Otherwise, we'd gone positive or negative, it would have it would have been... It would have really made this story convoluted. Now, going back through on additional playthroughs and seeing the positive and negative delusions definitely adds more you know, to everything that the story is. Same way of going through and getting the Crying Sky ending and doing a few extra scenes here and there, but now we're doing the character scenes, which again, it's not only adding some more context, but we get some changes in the middle of the story, and then we get unique endings. Which the fact that, you know, Takumi or Taku has got the Degilomania power, we're influencing things with our own delusions. So me answering those sets of questions is me actually influencing the actual world, which under normal circumstances would be completely insane. But we're in a video game, so... Oh, 
Maybe this will be the version of the story where we do immediately save our sister. Because I was wondering about that when I played the game initially. I was like, so how do I not, you know, be a failure? Many of it wasn't a failure. I probably wouldn't be on top of right? Earthquake! So how do you know your self-stirring bug is too powerful? Earthquake! Okay, so does that mean Nanami still had her hand cut off? Maybe? Yes? No? Oh no, we're not there yet. Good, she picked up. Okay, so something different is occurring. Oh, nope, no, it's not. Is her hand still in the box? Um, but what is... That's not a hand, thankfully. But there's still blood. Am I, like, refusing to acknowledge the hand exists? And, like, we're just seeing a... Because, I mean, is the phone kind of just floating there? Is the hand just... What I saw was the same model phone I had. It was bloodstained. Also, the bangle's not there. I knew exactly what that meant. Well, that's different. Daydream. Well, that's an entirely new name for this chapter. I lost the ability to think clearly. I flung up the door to the base and ran outside. A nasty sweat clung to my whole body and it made the night wind feel colder than usual. I realized I wasn't even wearing shoes. I could feel the coolness of the concrete beneath my feet. I had to go. I had to go. Put shoes on first! I had to go to the old front like Shogun said. Put shoes on! I was scared. I was like, oh, we don't have time. You will go slower barefoot. You will get there faster if you put shoes on. I was scared. I didn't want to go. I wanted to head right back into my room, curl up into a ball, and forget about everything. But if I didn't, I felt like something terrible would happen to me. So I think this is the version of the story where we do, like, leap off the skyscraper and get the D-Sword. But also, I can't help but notice that everything is wavy and shit. So are we in the middle of a delusion for this whole thing? My tears wouldn't stop coming. I wiped them away with the palm of my hand, but my vision was still blurry. <laughs> nah, not me. Crying sounds in Nami. I whispered. My voice sounded even more pathetic than I thought. It made me want to throw up. I shook my head, trying as hard as I could to drive away the weakness welling inside me. If I stepped, stopped it for even a moment here, I'd never make it over. Put shoes on! I had to keep the momentum going. I was worried about Nami, too worried to do nothing. To do nothing. That's why I'd run out of my room like this. Put shoes on! Or else it'll make it make your you're gonna hurt your foot, and then you're gonna hobble there, and it's gonna take you longer to get there. You will get there faster with shoes on. Keep up the momentum, get to the front, and things will work out. Hurry and put your shoes on. Thank you. Grab the Saratan figure as your good luck charm, then run. Just run. Keep the pressure on yourself. Right now, you're the only person who can save Nanami. I clenched my jaw. I went back to the base to get my shoes and and I thought I heard a sound. I left up in surprise, looked toward the sound and saw someone there. Hello? What? Hello? <laughs> I am confused. Huh? Nanami? 
I rubbed my eyes and stared at her. It was Nami. She's my little sister. I couldn't possibly mistake for anyone else. Nami? Nami! I heard over to her. For some reason, she was stark naked. She was slumped forward, and I couldn't see what expression was like. Her slender body was shaking. And technically, there is no nudity here, so we're fine. Nami! I didn't know what happened or what to do. All I could do was keep saying her name. I wanted to give her a big hug, but she'd probably call me a pervert big brother. I later figured. Brother. Okay, game. I'm being concerned about whether or not I need to censor him. And technically, it's just cleavage at the moment. So, there is still technically no nudity. She slowly lifted her head. Her face was deathly pale. Even her lips were pale. She was so pale, I thought she might die at any moment. Her eyes were empty. Big, but big tears fell from them when she saw me. Oni. Nana. Brother, I... What, what happened to you? Are you okay? Nami shl softly shook her head. What am I doing here? I don't know. I can't remember. I checked her over to see if she was injured. Of course, I avoided looking at anything I shouldn't see. Just so we're clear, I'm not getting horny over my RL little sister. I'm not interested in seeing her naked at all. Anyway, she didn't seem hurt. So, what was that blood on the phone? No, I couldn't think about I could think about that later. Let's just get you inside. It's cold. I offered her hand. Her movements were stiff. And she was still shaking too. She was like a newborn fawn. She grabbed my hand and she was cold. She was so cold it made me scream. You, you're really cold. Yeah, she's gonna have hypothermia, but still, this is... What is happening? I touched her bare shoulder knowing that she'd probably yell at me. It was cold too. Should I get her in a warm shower, or first get her something warm to drink? I'd say just throw blankets around her and give her something like hot cocoa to drink. Get warm fluids in. And just lots of blankets. Either way, I certainly could leave her out here naked. Now, now wasn't the time to worry about how she might think. Yeah, we had to prioritize safety. But still, like, what the fuck is happening? I said blankets, but I guess that's a start. I wanted to choose the cleanest clothes I had for her to wear, but there wasn't much at all. I didn't have many clothes besides my school uniform anyway. Oh, that's the shirt with the Saratan thing. Cool. I ended up giving her my limited edition Blood Tune sweatshirt. I had been keeping unworn and in mint condition. I made some instant coffee for her, too. I didn't drink coffee normally, but... I'd remember that a long time ago, Nanami had brought a bunch of snacks and food from my parents and mixed in with there a lot of them instant coffee. Another thing that reminds me of us, there's something called a Murphy drip. Now, granted, there's other ways you can do it using like injections and stuff, but one way of doing it is you boil a pot of coffee until it's so thick it's like tar and you give it to someone to drink. The idea is it's such a massive jolt of caffeine, it's supposed to help somebody deal with shock of, say, a life-threatening thing. Now, how effective that is, I don't actually know. But also how safe it is to just treat PTSD with massive amounts of caffeine. I don't I don't know if that's a good idea either. Or shock or whatever. Everyone's like, no one cares. I get it. Okay. It hadn't expired yet, so it should still be okay. Now I'm still sitting quietly on the sofa. She still had, she still looked pale, but getting somewhere to where Calmed her down. She wasn't shaking. I feel like I have to sneeze. I poured the coffee in a cup and suddenly handed it to her. She took it without complaint. Arigato. Thank you. She held the cup with both hands, staring at the black liquid within. Black it's ]ね? black, huh? I don't have any sugar or milk or anything fancy like that. She seemed satisfied with my explanation and pursed her lips before blowing on the coffee. <sighs> then she slowly lifted it to her mouth. Well, you have to blow on it first. I mean, it's hot. Give it a second. Just hold it for now. Was she always that sensitive to hot drinks? Hmm. I couldn't remember. I never actually cared to think about it. Nami was giving her full attention to the act of drinking the coffee. It seemed to warm her up a little bit. The color was returning to her cheeks. <laughs> Brother, this coffee is too hot. <laughs> then don't drink it. Just hold it for a bit and get the water. I'll drink it anyway, though. Then why she had then why had she complained in the first place? 
but at least she recovered enough to be able to complain. Huh. Hey, what happened? I worked up my courage and asked the question that had been on my mind. When I had seen the bloody phone, I was sure that Nanami had been kidnapped by Shogun. But I had been totally wrong. She was here, not at Ofront. The one, the one thing I couldn't understand, though, was how that had happened. Now and where her clothes had gone, it was also strange that she could be so cold. Nami just stared into her coffee cup. I don't know. I can't remember how I got here. Amnesia? Do you see the wrinkly little kid, a weirdo, in a wheelchair? No. You lost your phone, right? Did I? Where did I leave my clothes? I have no idea. Did anybody do anything to you? Do anything? Did, maybe does it anything hurt anywhere? We're probably going to have to go to the doctors in a bit. But right now we need to make sure you're not, you know, hypothermic. So, finish the coffee, and then you need to put on, like, a rest of a proper outfit. And then we need to, like, catch a bus. Does Japan have buses? I mean, everyone's been using trains, right? I don't know about the public transport system in Japan. Well, you know, like, in an age game, she would have been okay. But I couldn't ask her that. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't want to traumatize. I mean, maybe, but we do need to get her to the doctor to check on that. And since she didn't seem to be hurt anywhere at all, the odds would probably still need to go to the doctor in this situation. But right now, we need to prioritize... You know, not being hypothermic. So finish the coffee, warm up a little bit, put on proper clothes, and then we'll catch whatever... I mean, does Japan have buses? I assume they must have buses. I just know a lot of times they use trains and animes and mangas and stuff. I just don't see anybody using buses in anime, okay? Everyone's like, we don't know about Japan's... I'm just saying, maybe somebody is watching this that lives in Japan... That can, or has visited Japan, can tell me about like the, how the bus systems. And, then again, the Deathmark game had a bus. I was like, you're overcomplicated. I'm just saying, you know, public transport's different from country to country. I mean, how many buses are there? I, mean, I know there there's a huge reliance on the public trains in um, Japan. Do you think trains would be a bad thing with earthquakes and all, right? Like, wouldn't every time there's an earthquake, wouldn't that mess with like the train tracks? I don't know. Uh, she looked up like she just remembered something. My bangle. Huh? I lost the bangle you gave me. Well, you don't have any clothes or any other stuff, so of course you don't have any Yeah, but... For some reason, I just remembered that I lost the bank. Where did you lose it? I don't remember. Nami looked glum. This was getting me nowhere. Talking to her right now wasn't going to tell me anything. Yeah, it's at least keeping her mind off stuff and letting her calm down. That being said, yeah, the bangle doesn't matter. Her safety matters more. Should I take her to the hospital? Yes. Maybe I should call my parents first. I don't think your parents exist. They could come get her. Honestly, if they had a car that was reliable, she wouldn't be walking all the way out here. Again, it's kind of weird that we're on top of the building. I'm pretty sure our parents are dead. Hey, brother. Can I stay here tonight? We have to go to the hospital first. Also, where are you gonna fucking sleep? Go home! I feel really confused, like I don't know what's happening. More reason for us to go to the hospital. You might have a concussion. I mean, your hair's thicker than mine. Maybe you got hit on the head really hard and I can't see. It's covered by the hairband or something. I don't really want to go anywhere. Again, that might be a concussion. That would probably be dizziness and nausea. 
And also more reason why you shouldn't go out asleep, because you might die. We, we should go to the hospital. Well, she wasn't being obnoxious as she usually was. It wouldn't hurt to let her stay for just one night. Still, hospital first. And again, we need to clean off the bed then, so she can have the bed. Call mom and dad first. The box was still in the corner room. I took the bloody cell phone out of the bag and said, wipe blood off with wet tissue before handing it to her. My phone? Were you the one who sent this to me? She seemed confused. I felt dumb for asking the question. I mean, it would still make sense to ask it just in case. Just like maybe it would like it would jog something in her memory, like she would start thinking about things logically. Like, wait, why is my phone there? Call mom, dad, and then go take a shower. You should probably warm up. The shower was outside. It was a simple prefab shower room placed next to the shipping container, but it did have running water. I insisted on that. There was no bathtub, so I went to the public bath when I wanted to take a bath. Normally, though, I just take a shower. Yeah, that's another thing. Japan has, like, public baths and stuff. America does not have that. Okay. I'll go take a shower. Hey, will you come with me? You want me to keep watch? Fine, I'll stand out there... And I'll just stare out into space in case someone tries to, like, shoot lasers at us from a satellite or something. Huh? Huh? And my little sister gone crazy. She chuckled when she saw my astonishment. No. Of course I didn't mean I'd take a shower with you. I'm just kind of scared to go out there. Honestly, even if it wasn't for the kidnappy stuff going on, it's a shower that's outside. That's awkward. I would feel uncomfortable with that. Even even though it's like, okay, we're on top of a skyscraper and no one's likely to see us and it's got a curtain around it. It would still be awkward. I'd, I don't know if having somebody else there would make it better or worse. <coughs> I'm just saying under this situation, I don't know, maybe you don't want to be showering outside when you be like kidnapping people. Yeah, that makes sense. She showed up outside my place naked and couldn't remember how she got there or where her clothes were. So of course she'd be scared. So, I'd like if you could stay close enough that I could hear you when I was taking a shower. Yeah, I can just talk about like the plot of an anime or something while you're in there. Is that asking too much? I mean, I'll just put on an extra shirt or something because it's probably going to be a little cold out there. Again, how is the practicality of this? Why would you want a shower outside? I mean, understand. Okay, it's like, well, I'm living in a shipping container. Again. Just build and have another shipping container just for showering. She was looking at me. She seemed really like she meant This way she looked crap. I was starting to find my own sister, Moe. Fine. She was having a bad time today. It wouldn't kill me to act like a big brother for once. I could hear some kind of sound. I was only half conscious, but I could still hear it. What was that sound? It felt like I heard it somewhere before. Alright, oh, a cell phone set to vibrate. Was somebody calling my phone? Nobody ever called me. Could it be that Tunerasi song again? If so, I didn't want to answer. It was creepy. And the last time I heard it, it had knocked me out a full hour. I decided to ignore it and go back to sleep. But once you heard a sound, it was hard to unhear it. And whoever was kept calling again and again. What did I have, Matt? Oh no, everything's still wavy. Ugh. I opened my eyes. I was laying on the floor. Nami was on the sofa, or so I thought, but when I looked, she wasn't there. Where'd she gone? The bathroom? Or maybe she decided she didn't want to stay over at all, and had gone home. I still wasn't fully awake, but the phone kept ringing. Okay. It had been over three minutes now. You'd think it would have gone to the answering machine by now, but I forgot to set it up. Question mark? Like, what you don't remember if you did? They were so persistent that I finally gave in and grabbed the phone off my desk. I looked at this place he was calling, and... Unlisted number, of course. Ah, I can tell I really didn't want to answer. Hello? <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> Brother. It was Nami. I sighed, relieved. Where the hell was she coming from? 
She'd been barely able to stand a few hours ago, and she'd been saying all that stuff about not wanting to even go outside. Nami, Nami, where are you? Give back my right hand. My right hand? I hung up. What the hell was she going on about? How annoying. What kind of dumb trick was she trying to pull? Stop wasting my time. I felt silly for being worried. Evidently, she was feeling better. No need to go looking for her. She was probably calling from the public bathrooms on the floor below. I was really tired. I didn't have time to put up with this crap. I threw away the phone and I lay right down and closed my eyes. It's morning. Wake up. Come on, wake up. If you get up, I'll give you a good morning kiss. Wait, what am I saying? Forget I ever said that. Well, the world isn't wavy anymore. Hey, hey, how long are you going to be sleeping, dork? Okay, so we never even went to the old front. Like, and Nero's like, okay, because we care about our sister, we're gonna go to the old front building and we'll like jump off the skyscraper and dramatically get the sword and have superpowers. We'll start flying and become Goku and some shit. No, we just, we just like imagined she was here, and we took a nap, and we just sort of like never showed up to the old front. And Shogun's like, and like at this point, like Sue was like, um, he he never showed up. How long are you going to be sleeping, dork? I woke up to the sound of Saratan's voice. Nami was still nowhere to be seen. Had she really left without saying a word to me? Or had she just gone to school? What day was the day? Was today one of the days I was scheduled to go to school? I felt spaced out, like there was a fog settled over my head. I still wasn't fully awake. What time was it? Now here's the thing. Did Shogun do that to me? Did Shogun force that? Because he told, like, he could tell, like, how emotional I was over to Nami. He's like, oh my god, he's actually going to jump off the fucking building and try to grab the sword. Okay, dude, stay at the fucking... Like, just stay here. I don't need you getting yourself killed. I need you to be freaked out a little bit to awaken the sword, but I need you to not become spaghetti. I felt spaced out, like there was a fog settled over my head. I still wasn't fully awake. What time was it? I sat there on the floor trying to wake up when... You know, I can't help but notice that the shirt is suddenly more baggy on you. Also, wear pants! Have you said that sweater does look pretty cool? I would wear that sweater. That looks cool. But I can't help but notice, like, and again, while you can't see her right hand, the way she's, like, holding herself, you know, the other hand's partially in there. So we can see the left hand, but given the context of how it looks, there's no reason to assume that there's anything wrong. Oh, brother, you're up. The door opened and Nami picked her head in. I thought you went home. What is happening? No, I didn't. I told you I was staying the night. I don't... What? So that thing last night was a prank. Then never do something like that again. A prank? What are you talking about? Nami had a confused look on her face. She was playing dumb, I realized. She was going to try and lie her way out of this. She must think I was a complete idiot if she was trying to get away with this. In the cold morning light, I realized just how dangerous her outfit was. There was nothing under that sweatshirt. Nothing at all. Yeah. Each time she moved her hands, the hem of her shirt went up, and it looked like I might see something I wasn't supposed to see. Brother, what are you looking at? I'm trying to find that box. Where would the box with your supposedly severed hand go that is invisible where I couldn't see the bangle either. Nothing. 
She pulled down the hem of the cover atop her legs. Hey, don't stretch that. That sweatshirt's really rare. You're more worried about the sweatshirt than me. Brother, you jerk. Oni, you baka. I'm, I'm wearing underwear under this, just so you know. Well, that's good, but still. You need pants. Huh, you are? That's a shame. Wait, no, knock it off. Don't get horny over your own little sister. But where'd she get the underwear from? Well, at least she was back being normal to not. She looked like she was in really bad shape yesterday, but evidently a good night's sleep had fixed her up. I also smelled something really good. Was that the smell of frying bacon? How is my imagination cooking bacon? Hey, brother, you want some breakfast? Breakfast? Yeah, I'm making some around. Is it even cooked? Am I just eating raw bacon and imagining that it's cooked? Yeah, I'm making some right now. The base kitchen, or rather sink, was outside the shipping container, next to the shower room. There was no gas running up the food. Instead, there was a cheap, portable gas burner that I'd gotten for really cheap online. Of course, I never cooked, so I'd thrown it in a drawer somewhere and forgotten about it. Had Nanami managed to find it and drag it out then? What's on the menu? A sandwich, eggs, and bacon. I can't make anything really fancy in this kitchen. Also, you probably couldn't appreciate real quick. So I figured I'd just better make something for this. Ah. My normal breakfast was a bottle of soda and a pastry. The power of Pop-Tarts compels you. This would be the first real breakfast I had in a long time. <coughs> and I never thought I'd want to have my little sister cook for me, but now she was actually doing it. It made me pretty happy. But I could for but I could forgive her for what happened last night then. Uh, okay. Go get it ready then. Wow, look at you, Mr. Bossy. You should be grateful, you know. I let you stay the night for free. So if anybody should be grateful, it's you. I guess that's right. All right, thank you, thank you. I thought she'd give me a little bow or something, but she didn't. She smiled and left. Brother, let's eat outside. You've got that folding table, right? Bring it out here. Crap, I just gotten up and already realized boss was around. That breakfast she was making had better be good. I set up a simple folding table and chairs, and kind you might use camping, and waited five minutes or so. And then I sat there at a table talking to myself, eating raw bacon, imagining that it's good. Or was the bacon even real to begin with? Is any of the. Is, is my cooking stuff even real? When it was ready, Nanami brought breakfast to the table. After all, I'm a delusion, right? That means I could just be like I'm eating imaginary Pop-Tarts. Because I don't really need to eat to live, do I? So just imaginary Pop-Tarts? When it was ready, Nanami brought breakfast to the table and sat it down. It looked pretty good. Nanami had always helped Mom with her cooking. So she was surprised to look good. Good cook. Well, only two D girls were allowed bad at cooking and then say whoops I messed up cooking hee <laughs> when they screwed up I have my 3d sister I'd be really weirded out <sighs> might kick her off the ledge if she tried that well I mean it's kind of dark man now I'm smile and sat down chair next to me <laughs> eh, why are you sitting right next to me you're too close our shoulders are about to touch I can't even somebody this close to me I move my chair a distance from Nami <laughs> huh this is where the chair was you're the one who put it there, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, dude. There was camping chairs, less than 30 minutes in her high. Even the girl keys had been going up. If she wanted to move it, she could have. Well, whatever. Come on, brother. Eat your food. Let's eat. She put her hands together, and then she dug in with her chopsticks. She was hungrier than I thought she'd be. Evidently, she was feeling a lot better. It was like the weak girl I'd seen last night. Had been a lie. Does that mean that the hands just sit in there? Like, what's what's happening? Maybe it was a lie. Of course, there was only one reason she'd lie to me. Is Rimi just gonna show up? to Because I think normally Rimi came here to pick me up in the morning. Is Rimi gonna show up and just see me talking to myself? And be like, um, Taku? Taku. Um. I lied because I wanted to spend time with my big brother. I love him. Like that, Uwu? Hello, what kind of H game is this? 
LOL, LOL, of course. I knew exactly what I'd say. But I refuse. But the Pop Tarts refuse to be real. Brother, you're grinning at something. Are you having another weird delusion? I'm just trying to imagine new flavors of Pop Tarts. My ear itches. I quickly looked away, took one of the sandwiches and put it in my mouth. That's good. Is it real? It was a ham sandwich with mayo and everything. All the imaginary ingredients. Of course, it was not like a ham sandwich. It's hard to make, but considering there was nothing there, but a few seasonings I'd bought, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, right? I got up early to go to a 24-hour supermarket and bought a bunch of stuff. Huh? You went to a store, dressed like that? You're a pervert. I am not a pervert. Of course I wouldn't go outside like this. I borrowed your pants. Well then why aren't you still wearing them? I bought underwear too. Oh, so she bought underwear. Then. But that meant until she bought the underwear, she was wearing a boy's sweatshirt and pants with no bra or panties. I mean, hot. I wanted to wear a different shirt, to be honest. It's got this anime picture on it. It's pretty embarrassing. But you were nice enough to let me borrow it, so I felt kind of bad about wearing this Huh. She didn't understand Sarah Tan's charm, then. Proof she was an airhead. But while I might be comfortable wearing the shirt in Akihabara, even I wouldn't have the courage to wear it in the middle of Shibuya. So, where'd you get the money? There was a wallet in the pants. I borrowed. So it was fine. Oh yeah, there was a wallet. In, oh, there was a wallet in my pants. I wonder whose wallet that was. <laughs> Her tiny mouth was chewing on a piece of bacon as she spoke. Fine. What was fine? That's my wallet. Did you use my money? Well, I lost mine yesterday, so yes. That doesn't mean you can just use my money. Nanami wasn't listening to my complaint, though. She was looking dressed as she smashed up the yellow yolk of her egg. I think that's acceptable, though. Like, under that circumstance, like, yeah. Besides, it's not like she fucking... So, yeah. Again, Nishio. This is not a thing to react about. I lost my wallet, my school bag. And worse, though, I lost my bangle, too. Bangle! I wasn't happy either, you know. I mean, I had enough cash for all the real money trading I did, but it still had felt like I had been stolen from. Who cares about that bang? It's just a cheap piece of junk. And it was something I'd given her for free, too. It shouldn't matter to her at all if she lost it. Why was it such a big deal to her? Nami fidgeted. It was the first present you ever gave to me. It made me really happy. The music has stopped. What horrible thing is about to happen? You're not going to fool me. You can act cute all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that you took the cash from wallet. I'm going to find it. I can't let it stay lost. For some reason, she was clenching her fist as she spoke. As I looked down at her hands, I saw there was a white bandage wrapped around her sleeve near the right wrist. That bandage. Huh? Oh, this. She pulled back her sleeve to show me. Sure enough, there was a bandage wrapped around her wrist. It hadn't been there when I found her naked last night. Give back. My right hand. My right hand. Now I got it. This was the next step of the prank she was pulling. She was going all out. But what was the point? Take the bandage off. Enough of the fucking prank. It's not a funny prank. It's not a prank. When I woke up this morning, my right hand was aching. I don't know why, but I got a bandage and wrapped it up. If it aches, a bandage isn't going to do anything. Do I have an ice pack? It's not just a bandage, there's a compress pad on it. Then just put the compress on. I don't know why you need a bandage. I know that, but, you know, it makes me feel better seeing a bandage up. That made even less sense. Come on, take it off. I looked like I was casually eating a sandwich, but my heart was racing. 
Maybe I was overthinking things, but if Nami's call last night had, hadn't been a prank after all, maybe her cheerfulness right now was just an act, and she was actually in huge trouble. Trouble she didn't want me to find out about. Jeez. You're a really demanding older brother, you know? She reluctantly began to take off the bandage. I was caught off guard by how easily she agreed. Maybe I was overthinking things after all. I took a bite of the bacon and egg, making sure to avoid looking at her arm. Okay, I took it off. I gulped and took a deep breath and slowly turned to look at my little sister's arm. The skin under the bandage looked just fine. She wasn't injured at all. There wasn't even a bruise. Wait, has she taken the compress off too? I hadn't even told her to do that. I grabbed her hand and brought it close to my face to look at it. But brother... You're not hurt. There's nothing there. I never said I was. I just said it ached. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've been overthinking things after all. Maybe I was just paranoid after the message from Shogun yesterday. Wait a second. You stink. Your arm smells like a compress pad. I winced and pushed your arm away. Of course it does. And don't tell a girl she stinks. It's really mean, stupid jerk. Shut up, eat your food, and go to school. I didn't want to waste any more of my valuable time dealing with my little sister. Alright, school, but how am I supposed to go if I don't have any uniform? Good, good point. I'll skip school today and go home. I've got a spare blouse and skirt. But what about the blazer? I'll have to go... I'll have to have mom and dad buy me a new one. As Nami started to mumble to herself about her next steps, I finished my breakfast and headed back inside the shipping container. A man's body was found in the early morning 20th on a road in Shoto area Shibuya Ward. Really? Um, the body belonged to a 31-year-old Hashiya, who appeared to have died of suffocation. Okay, this is different. The victim's now stuffed pieces of cloth cut apart with scissors. The smaller silk pieces were found in his stomach. The police say the cloth likely belongs to a girl's winter uniform from Sume Academy, a private academy in Shibuya Ward. So the academy is just a three minute walk from where the body is found. The police are investigating potential connection. I didn't get to read that. Uh, another new murder. They had died from chopped up pieces of Sumay girl's uniform in their mouth. Could that uniform be in Nanami's? Yeah, no way it was a coincidence. The timing was too good. It had to be Shogun. He must have kidnapped her as part of the murder and then taken her uniform. Shogun was taunting me. I would be next. It was finally my turn to be killed. Brother, what's wrong? Didn't you go to school? I almost fell out of my chair when I heard Nanami's voice. Behind me. Go to school. You don't look so good. I never look so good. I need more vitamin B. Twelve. Some iron. Oh, Nanami. I reached out a hand towards Nanami. He's gonna kill me. Kill you? What are you talking about? It's true, he's coming after me next, Nami. I'm sorry he kidnapped you because of me. Oh, what do I do? I'm scared. I'm so scared. I didn't want to look like a wimp in front of my little sister, but I didn't have the strength to keep it together any longer. <coughs> I went to turn to someone for help. I wanted someone to protect me. Rimi hadn't contacted me all lately. Ayasi was in the hospital. There wasn't anybody... Yeah, she's currently taking care of Shogun in this room. There wasn't anybody else I can count on to protect me. Nami gently grabbed my outstretched hand. Ah, you're such a loser, brother. You can't do anything on your own. You're probably just tired of playing too many video games. You should skip the computer games today and lie down on the sofa. Don't leave me! Fine, fine. I won't leave you by yourself. Really? Really, you were nice to me last night, so that's why I say thank you. Nami. 
Family was so important to have. I couldn't rely on strangers when it really counted. My family were the only people I could really, truly rely on. <coughs> I felt so relieved that she offered me her hand that I almost cried. I clung tightly to her hand. Brother, you're such a spoiled brat. It's like I'm the big sister, and you're the little brother. That actually is a thing from the reality thing where, you know, in Shogun, because Shogun's real talking to me, how she was, like, talking about how he was basically stuck in a hospital bed, and she was basically having to be... Because, I mean, he stopped growing, so he's still the same height he was when he was 10 years old. And he's also, like, dying of super cancer. <laughs> Shut up. Hi, hi. Right, right. Yes, yes. There, there. She patted my head jokingly. To her, it might be a, just a joke. But right now, having somebody touch me made me feel so much better. Nada, I need you to do something for me. What? Um, since all we usually did was fight, I was embarrassed to ask this. But I couldn't afford to be embarrassed right now. Are you asking for a hug? Can you say that uh, you, you just want to hear your family members say you, that they care about you? Can you say... I got to scratch my ear. My ear is itchy. Why can't you finish your sentence? Don't tell me. I won't know what it is you want. Stay here tonight, too? I mean, dude, if we're that concerned, why don't we just go to our parents' house? Granted, I know from other playthroughs it doesn't exist. But, if we're that concerned, let's just go home to our parents. I'd feel better if she did. I couldn't handle the thought of spending the night alone. Terrified Shogun would come for me. Nami probably wouldn't, wouldn't like it, though. She might call me a pervert if I wasn't lucky. I looked up at her and scared what she might say. Nah, oh, is that all? Sure. I can stay as many nights as you want. Really? I'm worried about you, too, you know. I can't leave you here alone. Well, that's extremely thoughtful. Even though I live in a fucking... Pretty much cardboard box. Thank you, that helps so much. Phew. Family really mattered the most. No, having a real little sister was a matter most. I was so glad to have a little sister named Minami. Now all she had to do was stop being such a brat, and she'd be the perfect sibling. <coughs> Is that hand just sitting there rotting this whole time? Is this person real? Nanami hadn't come back. She helped out with lunchtime, do some shopping, get some clothes from home. She waved at the left, she'd be right back. Eight hours had passed since then. During that time, I hadn't gone online or even watched Blood 2. I just sat on the sofa waiting for her to come back. I clutched the phone tight in my hand, checking every minute to see it. So is her hand just in the room, invisible, rotting, that I can't tell? Checking every minute to see if she'd sent me a message. I tried to call her, but only got a message saying the phone was off or out of service area. Why hadn't she come back? Did our parents say something to her when she got home? Like what? Siblings or not, it's not appropriate for a boy and girl your age to be sleeping in the same room. Yeah, I can see that. Wait, no, I couldn't. Not a chance in hell. Or maybe they were fighting over her lost uniform? Then I realized that she must have been wandering around Shibuya naked before she arrived at the base. Honestly, it's a wonder the cops didn't grab her. I can see our parents going to the police when they found out. But what if something even worse had happened? Like, I don't know, having her hand cut off and being stapled to a fucking giant crucifix sword. What if Shogun had grabbed Nami on the way home? Or maybe his servant Yua had done it. What if she was already dead? What if... Maybe Shogun had already sent me another message. I didn't have the courage to check my computer to see, though. <laughs> Nanami, don't <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> I wanted her to come back as soon as she could. I wanted her to skip school and stay with me until things calmed down. Rimi had promised she'd stay with me, but now she was gone. If I lost Nami too, I'd... I'd... Okay, that's a phone thing occurring. <laughs> The phone in my hand suddenly started to vibrate. I hit the pu button to start to call almost immediately without checking who was calling. <laughs> Hello? Nanami? Hey, where are you? Brother. Help me. I froze. Had Shogun kidnapped her after all? Why? Why did you abandon me? Tell me, brother.
Shogun come. Is it Shogun? Did he do, do something to you? Ah, it hurts. My right hand hurts. Again? This prank is getting old. I put down the phone and whispered the words almost unconsciously, deja vu. I had the same conversation last night. She told me to give back her right hand then, too. thought it was a prank, but maybe it wasn't? I couldn't tell. I covered my hand, head with my hands, and curled up into a ball. Nanami, where are you? Come back. She's walking slowly. I went outside with no real destination in mind. The sky was already dark, and not even the moon was out. I could see the city of Shibuya in the distance. It was shrouded in a faint glow of light. Even after coming outside, though, I didn't have the energy to go look at the Nanami. Should I try crawling again? It was possible she was just pranking me two days in a row. Maybe I was just being paranoid. Brother, where are you going? I gasped and turned. So is Shogun just, like, broadcasting a picture of her here to stop me from leaving? Like, no, you stay there. Like, I don't need Sua killing you. I gasped and turned to the direction of the voice I just heard. Nanami was there, holding shopping bags and looking like Kamigus. She was wearing different clothes than when she left. She must have changed. It reminds me of the outfit that uh, Rimi's been wearing. Must be popular this time of year. Oh my. Where have you been? Sorry I'm late. Mom and I went shopping for new clothes. We just finished a bit ago. That was most likely the possibilities I could consider. But there was also one thing that didn't make sense. What was that call then? Call? Oh, I should have sent you a message saying I was running late. Yeah. No. You called my phone. No, I didn't. You're going senile, brother. She answered with a smile. This conversation wasn't making sense. Anyway, what do you think we're having for dinner tonight, hmm? It's Salisbury steak. I'm making it myself. Help me out, okay? I and mean, Salisbury steak's okay. I would actually make Salisbury steak sandwiches. I would take two pieces of white bread, some Salisbury steak, and a piece of cheese. Like some American cheese. And made a pretty good sandwich. Wait, hold it. You called me, right? You told me you wanted me to give back your right hand or something. Jeez, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say that. Are you sure you didn't mistake me for somebody else? I don't have other contacts. She looked genuinely annoyed as she headed inside the shipping container. Was she lying to me? Sure didn't look like it. And anyway, Nami wasn't the type of girl to play a mean prank like that. At least I couldn't remember any time she'd done something like that. So, what was the phone call on that? Another one of Shogun's traps? I felt like the prickling on my neck. Somebody was looking at me. I felt like, whose eyes are those? I don't know what's happening. After dinner, no. Nanami, I need no, to talk no. to you. Mm -hmm. Huh? No, what? No, no. She was reading one of those manga volumes I piled in the corner of the room. When she spoke, she didn't look up from the book while she had her nose in it. No. This is important. No, listen. No. What is it? What's so important? No. She closed the book and sat up straight. No. Will this work? Do you remember anything about what happened two days ago? Two days ago is when I found her naked outside my shipping container. Her clothes, her clothes, her bag, her bangle were all missing. Her cell phone had been sent to me in a cardboard box covered in blood. This wasn't normal. Nami had said she didn't know how she ended up like that. She had mild amnesia. But what about now? Had she gotten better? The Nami in front of me seemed like the Nami I knew. Her expression darkened and she gently shook her head. Not yet. Nothing at all? Nothing. At all? Nothing at all. 
I was trying not to think about it, actually. I didn't tell mom. <sighs> ow, ow, that hurt. Ow, ow, ow. Why did yawning and stretching hurt? It was really hard to keep her from asking what had happened to my uniform. Maybe I should take her to the hospital after all. What kind of the doctor is handling these? A psychiatrist? I think so. Honestly, at this point, I mean, honestly, but concussion should still be a concern. Though she got hit hard enough for a concussion, it should be bruised out enough by now to see. I'm just saying maybe we do like a CAT scan first. Or an x-ray. I imagine we did an x-ray of that to make sure the skull isn't broken. Maybe I get Dr. Takashino. Isn't he dead? Then I remember the doctor. Oh, yeah, he is. Uh, I felt like squeezing my chest. No, no, no. Not me. Somebody's trying to kill me. Huh? Her eyes went wide. She probably thought I was crazy. But it was the truth. I decided to open up to her about everything. About Shogun, about how I seen the third new gen murder, crucified, about all the strange, terrifying things that had happened to me since then. But the threatening message I received from Shogun just before I found her, and the two strange calls from the fake Nanami. At first she chuckled, this is all just some delusions of yours, right? But eventually she realized that I wasn't joking, her expression tensed up. Listen, you can't go by off by yourself for a while. You can be attacked at the same time. Brother, I'm scared. I'm scared too. So we need to work together. Together we could support each other. I wasn't sure how much a loser like me could provide any kind of support to Nami. But without her help, I wouldn't last much longer. <coughs> Ideally, I would have liked someone who could physically protect me. But I wasn't sure how about going to police for help. The detectives I talked to in front of Tudor and I building were nowhere to be found since then. What happened to that stuff about sending someone to protect me? And they might still think I was the one who'd be on crucified murder, too. I couldn't trust the police. I had to stay with, inside the base as much as possible, until I came up with a plan. Nanami was sitting on the sofa, sunk into it, her arms wrapped around her trembling body. I sat down on the sofa, staring blankly at the Sarah Tan poster on my wall. My room was much cleaner than it had been. After I'd finished my story, Nanami had sat there silently for a while, before suddenly saying that she wanted to clean my room. After two or three hours, it was much better state. Nanami had probably wanted to do something to take her mind off of what I told her, I assumed. Now she was lying on the bed. How long had it been since anybody had used that bed for its intended purpose? I vaguely remembered sleeping in it for the first few months after I moved here. I ha hated, hadn't wanted her to clean my room, but now that it was done, I realized it was the right thing to do. Last night, she had slept on the sofa, and I had slept on the floor. It had been horribly uncomfortable, and I was glad for the chance to be able to sleep on the sofa tonight. As nocturnal as I am, though, I couldn't go to sleep as early as Nanami. Well, I was past midnight. So maybe it wasn't early, but even that was too early for me. Maybe. I always went to sleep around the time the sun started to come up. So here I was, sitting on the sofa, just staring into space. Had Nanami gone to sleep, I couldn't hear the sound of her snoring. Maybe she had read my mind because she turned over the bed and poked her head out from under the covers. <laughs> hey, <laughs> brother. You couldn't sleep? <laughs> yeah. Nami looked like she was wanted to say something. After a few moments of hesitation, she whispered, Um, want to sleep in the bed? I mean, honestly, you'd probably sleep better on the sofa than me because you're shorter than I am. But... It'd just be polite to let you have the more comfortable place to sleep. Besides, I'm already used to sleeping on the couch. <laughs> what? Uh, um, it's not like I want you to sleep in the same bed as you, okay? But you know, you're such a loser and a scaredy cat that you probably can't sleep on your own. So you know, just for today? Are you just saying you're scared to sleep in the bed by yourself? I mean, honestly, you should be safe up there. It's It's got the height advantage if somebody breaks into place. Her words started to have more and more force behind them. She wasn't coming out and saying it, but from the sound of things, she was too scared to sleep. Yeah, I mean, I assumed. And so now, here we are. 
It's probably warm up there too because heat rises. So it's probably warmer at the top of the container. Again, this is not a OSHA certified sleeping rat. Like this is not a safe place to sleep. Like I'm just going to sleep in a shipping container on top of a skyscraper. Like it would have to be windy out there too. Even on the summer. If you do anything naughty, I'll get really mad, okay? Of course I won't. How can I be sure? You might get all excited or something. I won't. You're my sister. I don't consider you cute. Huh. That kind of hurts in a way. You could at least find me a little cute. But no way. If you keep complaining, I'll go to sleep on the sofa. I'm sorry. I won't say that again. She pouted and fell silent. Huh. This is more embarrassing than I expected. And my heart was pounding too. Even if she was my little sister, I had never been this close with a girl. But I don't slept in the same bed as one. I said I didn't think she was cute, but that was a lie. She actually kind of was. And why was she looking at me like that anyway? Close your eyes. Don't look at me. This kind of, was kind of weird. Well, yeah, it's a tiny ass fucking bed. And we're in the air. Who has bunk beds anymore? Hey, brother, do you think I'm annoying? I mean, I'm trying to sleep right now, so yes. Huh? Huh? You do, huh? I did. She was bratty. She talked back. And she wouldn't leave me alone. At least, that's what I used to think. After spending more time with her in the past few days, I had changed my mind. She was in bad shape herself, and yet she always there to help smile at me when things were rough. Having a little sister maybe wasn't so bad after all. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe I should start drinking coffee instead of tea. I don't. It's okay if you do. But I just want you to know that I don't hate you or anything. What was she talking about? You were in the hospital for, right? And then. I was never in the hospital. I had been going to one, but never stayed there. Liar. You were in the hospital for a long time. I wasn't. You were mistaken. Am I? Well, whatever. Anyway, when you couldn't go to a school, I started to think that I had to be the big sister now. That's why I always was so bossy, you understand? Not because I don't like you. A long time ago, before you started going to the hospital, I always let you spoil me. You were my big brother, and I went to you for everything. I loved you. Did you have to say it in the past tense? So now I'm trying to be the big sister. To help you as much as I can. I don't know if I'm really helping, though. Adorable laugh. I'm sorry I'm such a loser. Maybe because of everything that was going on, I found myself able to say things that I'd never be able to say otherwise. Don't worry about it. We're brother and sister. And I know how you used to be back when you weren't like this. So, no matter how big loser you are, I'll never hate you, okay? Ah, uh, Nanami. Well, thank you. Now let's try to get some sleep. I had no idea that she felt that way. It made me so incredibly happy, I couldn't believe that I had ever hated having a 3D sister. I was so glad she was here. But today... Can you be there for me? I was trying to act big and tough back there. But the truth is... I'm actually under inside a planetarium basement with my hand cut off. Crucified to a giant Super Saiyan sword. And my hand is sitting on the fucking floor in this tiny fucking room, and it is already rotting. 
When I'm lying here all alone, I start to think about all kinds of scary things. That, that, that's... Doesn't everybody? So I wanted you to be next to me. I wanted to feel safe. I mean, doesn't everyone feel that way too? She curled up and patted her head against my chest. Nami smiled good. I always wanted to do this. I mean, it's nice to be able to listen to someone's heartbeat. I always wanted you to be there for me. Yay, supportive people. I wrapped my arms around her slender body tightly, so tightly. Big hug. As long as she was here, I didn't need anything else. Not my serotonin figures, not my ESO rep. None of that. All I needed was a living flesh and blood sister who cared about me so much. Yay, someone cares about me. Yay. Feeling the warmth of her skin made me feel so much better. The next thing I knew, I'd fallen into a pleasant sleep. I woke up on the sofa. Did I fall out of the fucking bed? Or did I sleepwalk? Huh? That's strange. I've been sleeping on the bed with Nami. Also, our house, our room seems to be a mess again. And there seems to be shit stacked on the bed. Are we finally coming out of our, you know, make-believe delusion to find the fucking maggot-infested hand by now? That's strange. I've been sleeping in the bed and I'm... I mean, if we're really coming out of the delusion, we should definitely be smelling something. Had I come back here at some point without realizing it, I looked up at the bed and there was a bulge in the sheets and Nanami was evidently still asleep. Okay, they just didn't redraw the CG to have a picture of the bed that's not covered in. I checked the time on my phone. Huh? Wasn't it like midnight? How is it an hour before the time I got on the bed? What, did 23 hours go by and we've just been like in a coma? Something felt strangely wrong. Is it even the same day? What day is today? Okay, that's that's not 11.04. That's that's the date. That's supposed to be the November 4th, right? So it is... 8.11? Which means it's like... Around like five hours before we got into the bed. So we've been... On, do, do we like sleepwalk? And what is happening? Something felt very strange. Strangely wrong. Something wasn't right. But what? What was this strange sensation in my heart? What day was it today? I didn't remember being in November yet. Why the hell was I waking up at 8pm at night? Had I been out for 20 hours? No, that was impossible. Even Nami had made me feel a lot less tense. But not so relaxed I could sleep for almost a full day. Maybe the phone was broken and showing the wrong time. I looked at the date on my computer and said it was just past 8 o'clock. On November 4th. So no, dumb. this can't be right. I booted up my email software, internet browser, at the same time music happens, and began to look around the news sites. They all had the same date, November 4th. I read a bunch of articles that I accidentally skipped through. Surge of Savior fails to appear. Alright, we haven't checked the computer in forever. Uh, I, I need to read that. I read a bunch of articles. One of them bothered me. One backed by the famous American psychic investor Yuri Brightman would appear at Shibuya's powers a new gen killer. The message was signed by none other than Yuri Brightman himself. Both TV and Mount Fuji. This bold decision was unfortunately ended poorly for them. The boy never appeared. Oh. Uh, but one by dated October 28th. One week ago. Okay, it's. Wait, it's been an entire week? I have been s I thought maybe it had been like two or three days, tops. Two days by the time. You're saying it's been an entire fucking week. You're saying I've been just sitting here talking to myself and having an imaginary bacon for a fucking week. The boy never appeared in the live footage showed nothing but an angry crowd screaming from the scramble. Did it say my name up there? I can't I didn't know if it did or not. I don't know if it's possible to rewind the game. 
Do you have anything to do with the message of Shogun? Twenty callers, press release, TV, mild station between the earthquake and the new day. The origins of the message are still unknown in the press time. We believe the decision was appropriate. So I don't know if it said my name or not. I can't read that. The message had told me to come over at 9 p.m. This couldn't be a coincidence. There was more. What was this? It didn't make sense. Okay, how does the DQ and puzzle thing exist? I, I didn't even get attacked by people. Did, did they just attack Kozway and she beat the shit out of them and then... What is happening? Oh, that also means it wasn't Shogun that paid the delinquents. It was Sua. What? The 6th new gen case was supposed to be SMJK, right? SMJK. Is that supposed to be like... I, that's the one where the Sume jacket get shoved down somebody's mouth. What are these emojis? Group dive. We have a a person like that. We have the pregnant man. We have the crucified. Okay, crosses. Vampire. Okay, um, brain dead. Okay, he looks like a zombie. Yummy. The person has like forks and stuff like they're eating food. Is that person like a Monopoly man? I like... You guys ever play Monopoly? You can puzzle. Which means... The actual person that was part of the yummy... Thing, it was... The person who ate a fucking hand. Does that mean it... What's underneath my blanket? Does that mean I cleaned up my own room? Put my body pillow... Under the blanket... And then cuddled my body pillow, imagining that my body pillow was my sister. While her severed hand has been sitting in my fucking house. Unless Remy came here and picked it out, but I mean, I've been here the whole time. I mean, the hand is... Shouldn't I be smelling something? When did that happen? I froze, staring at the new gen site. You've got mail, dork. Sarah's words brought me back to the sense. From the look of it, I had so many messages that I had taken time to download them all. Software had not only just finished. <laughs> is this actually from Shogun, or is this one from Sua? Because here's the thing. Shogun can view me view his psychic powers. What the fuck is happening? He's like, why didn't you come? I warned you. You think you can ignore me? You disgust me. You think you're hot stuff, huh? Don't mess with me on this. Is this some kind of joke? I'm gonna kill you, you piece of shit. What is happening? Fifty... Fifty-three... 53 new messages! And they're all from Shogun. Look of it, he was pissed off. I've never seen Shogun use language like this before. It's probably Sua pretending to be Shogun. Sweat started to pour from my re pour my body. As I sat there in terror and confusion, I clicked on the newest email. You ignore me for a full week, huh? What was going on here? What the hell was going on? You honestly think you can get away with that? That's how you want to play this? And I guess it's going to be Nunami who pays the price. I might go overboard and kill her. Don't, but don't blame me, okay? It's your fault. I don't know what's happening. Is Shogun like my... And again, wouldn't Shogun want me to save his sister? Our sister? My sister? Our sister? What is happening? Calm down, don't lose control. Think. This has to be just a delusion. Yeah, that's right, a dream. Just, just a dream. Before long, it would end, and then I wake up, and I'm back in bed with Nunami... That was real, was this wasn't. Huh? <laughs> the sound of someone banging on the door echoed through the room. Someone was here. I held my... I need to actually... I, I keep accidentally pushing buttons too fast. I held my breath and stared at the door. Silence, nothing at all. To indicate someone was there, just when I thought I was hallucinating. 
Just when I thought I was hallucinating, another knock. I wasn't hearing things. Was it Shogun? Was he finally here to kill me? But instead, I heard a surprising voice on the other side of the door. Brother. Open up. The Nami? What, did I, was I so panicked over, you know, wanting to save the Nami that I, like, passed out and went into a coma? Huh? Why? I looked over at the bed. Nami should have been sleeping there. There was a bulge in the white sheets, after all. Oh. Hey, hey, Na Nami, oh, wake up! Nami. I climbed halfway Thank up you. the ladder to the bed and tried to wake the Nami up. The sheets didn't move at all. Something was wrong. Na -nami. The Nami... I ripped off the sheets what I saw was a bunch of boxes. Okay. The Nami wasn't there. Eh? Huh? My mind went blank. The bed hadn't been cleaned up. There was no way somebody could sleep there. It was just a bunch of boxes filled with manga and H-game packages. It was a storage space, just like it had been yesterday before Nami cleaned it up. Now Nami had cleaned it up. Yesterday? I looked around the room. It hadn't been cleaned up at all. Why hadn't I noticed when I woke up? I was so confused. My memories were all messed up. Brother. The voice outside the door again. The Nami's voice. Who was that Nanami? Where'd the one who'd been sleeping on my bed gone? What happened to the Nami that I'd found shaking naked outside my room? I didn't understand. Nothing made sense. I staggered over the door on unsteady feet, and then fell up against it. The door was padlocked from inside. There was no way to leave if the padlock was closed. Nanami couldn't have left without me knowing it. It was impossible. I thought I was going to cry. There must be another one of Shogun's attacks, I thought. But I had to open the door. I could hear Nanami outside. She sounded weak and helpless, and she was calling my name. I unlocked the padlock and slowly opened the door. Brother, did you escape? Did you awaken your sword and escape and come here? Well, this is concerning. Brother, uh uh. Nanami was there. She was wearing her missing uniform. Her whole body was covered in blood. Her right hand was severed at the wrist. She was holding a sword I'd never seen before. A D-sword. She was looking at me with empty eyes. I was too shocked to speak. Yeah, she's she, she has trauma and shock. We, we should get her to a doctor. Why didn't... You come for me. I waited a whole week. I kept calling for you to help me. This was a delusion. This was a delusion. This was a delusion. My right hand hurts. My right hand hurts. Give it back. My right hand. Give back my right hand. When I woke up this morning, my right hand was aching. Which was a delusion? Which was real? What was it I had been seeing? Who had I been talking to? What happened to that Nanami? Where had this Nanami come from? Brother! Suddenly I heard a voice behind me, in front of me. I could see Nanami covered in blood, but I could hear her calling me from behind. I slowly turned around and... Hey! Nanami? Do you see the other Nanami? And other Nanami, do you see the prior Nanami? Nanami was there! She was wearing clothes I'd given her. Her right hand still attached to the wrist. There was two Nanamis. Well, this is concerning. Um, it's you. Who is that? 
The two Nanami said the same thing at the same time. Nanami looked at the other Nanami suspiciously. And Nanami looked at the other Nanami now with tears in her eyes. Surrounded on both sides by Nanami's eye. This is a delusion. I dropped to the ground and put my hands over my head. If this was a delusion, I hoped I'd wake up soon. This was horrible. It wasn't the kind of delusion I wanted, but I still didn't snap back to reality. What is that? Fake. The bloody Nanami slowly moved. She raised the D-sword. It was as big as she was, and terrible, almost painful to behold. Why is there a fake here with you? Is that... Why you didn't come save me? Um, for all I understand, I think that actually is you. Both of you are you. If Nanami stabs the other Nanami, does it kill both Nanamis? How does the Piccolo Kami stuff work here? That being said, she definitely looks pissed. That being said, I definitely don't blame her. That being said... That being said... Yes, yes, this Nanami is why I didn't come save you, because... I thought I had saved you, because I thought this was you, because it is you. And so she's like, I'm not fake, because she also thinks she's the real Nanami, but then again... I also remember the thing in the main story where I hugged a Nanami and she exploded into light. Then again, I get stabbed in the chest by Rimi in the first ending. And I also explode in light. I mean, technically, the original Takumi is a, you know, a person in a wheelchair dying of super cancer. And I'm a fake made by his power. This appears to be a fake Nanami made also by his power that thinks it's also Nanami. I mean, I think I'm also Takumi, but... Okay, this is... You're the fake with your weird sword. They both had Nanami's voice. They both had Nanami's face. They both called me brother. Which was real? Which was fake? We're both real? We're both fake? Technically, the one there is real. You're an imposter. Get away from my brother. The bloody Nanami swung the D-sword easily with her one hand. She was aiming at the right at the neck of the unbloody. How are you doing that in this very cramped space? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not expected. Congratulations, writer of the game. I can't predict what's fucking happening. Nanami froze. Nanami's aim was true. The sword dug into Nanami's neck and passed right through. Huh? I had a sword sliced into the neck of an unblade Nanami, but no blood came forth. <coughs> there was no injury. She was standing there, just like she had been a moment ago. I'd seen the other Nanami swing the sword at the speed it was going. They should have chopped her head clean off. I knew you were a fake. Huh? Why? Stop it. Because you're an imposter. I'm not an imposter. No, you're the imposter. You're among us. I'm an among us. You're an among us. So everyone says, that's a forced joke. I got it. Shut up. Brother. Get away. Get away. How am I... This place, I can touch both walls with at the same time. This is literally smaller than a trailer. How am I going to move anywhere? Honestly, I don't know how you were able to swing the sword, let alone if you're swinging it to hurt her. Like, honestly, it should have killed me as well. There's no space in here. How is this not constantly claustrophobic? Brother, get away. Get away from her. No, brother, I'm right here. 
Just shut up. I screamed. I couldn't take any more. None of this made any sense. Which of you want to use the delusion? I have one sister named Nami, not two. I looked at both Nami's in turn. They both look like the Nami I knew. So I turned to the one wearing the clothes I'd given to her. I made a wish. I wish that this was the real Nanami. I wanted the one I held so tightly in the bed to be the real Nanami. I wished and reached out my hand. I reached out my hand toward her face and wanted to touch her cheek. But, just like the Dio so done, my hand went up to her cheek and passed right through. Nanami was right there, but I couldn't touch her. I didn't feel a thing. It was like she was a hologram. I felt a sadness taking over my mind. I couldn't control A huge tear started to fall down my face. No way. It's not true. I'm not a fake. Right? Brother, tell me I'm not a fake. I mean, technically you are the real Nanami still. You're like piece of the other one. I guess in the same way I'm the real Takumi. I'm made from him. Of him. Like The math on this is getting confusing. Nami came towards me. She went to give me a hug. But the Nami in front of me had no real body of her own. Her body passed right through my hands. It's not true. It's not. I am right here. Nami's right hand gripped my left. Ah, uh, I could feel it. It was gripping my own weakly. Her body, her neck, her head, none of them were real. But her hand is real. Are you- Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Are you telling me that the hologram Nanami, all of her is light particles that are transparent, but she's using the actual severed hand from the other Nanami, which means most of her doesn't exist, and the part of her that does exist is a weak old rotted hand. Well, kudos, developers of the game. You need therapy. But her right hand was touching. Monster! The bloody Nanami, the one missing her right hand, screamed. Get away from my brother. Now! She screamed, and then the strength drained from her body. She fell silent. She fell, still holding the... Did she pass out? Yeah, the adrenaline probably wore off, and, which probably sped up the blood loss. The Nami was sweating terribly, and the color faded from her face. Of course, Ed, she'd lost so much blood, she'd even had her hand cut off. Of course, she'd collapse. A terrible thought came to me. I knew it was impossible. It was the only thing I could think of that would answer what was going on, and the answer out of a nightmare. That's right. A voice that wasn't in Nanami's. What you just thought is exactly right. What, the, what that the other one's got her hand? On the other side of the fallen Nanami, standing outside the door was... Rimi. Rimi. Rimi Sakahata holding a D-sword shaped like a pair of wings. Hey, at least you're not a held hostage by Nerose now. I'm kind of confused where this is going in the story. That being said, I've kind of just been in this shipping container for a week. Kind of half coma, half talking to myself. Rumi Sakata was holding a D-sword the shape of pair of wings. Our eyes met. She was looking at me with such sadness in her eyes. The Nana whose right hand you're holding is a creature you're attempting to real boot. I don't think real boot's been explained to me in this playthrough. Real boot? You couldn't accept reality, so you created her. But shouldn't I have at least been aware of that? The Nanami with the D-Sword is the real one. D don't lie to him. I'm real. 
Taku. When you saw Nana's severed hand, your mind went into shock. So you created an illusion. Where you'd never seen her hand. A delusion where Nana was safe and unharmed. Okay, so why didn't... The real... Takumi... Cancel that! I mean, he made me, so didn't his power trump mine? So you created a delusion where you'd never seen her hand. A delusion where, the not, where Nana was safe and unharmed. I hadn't seen any hand. Shogun had sent me a bloodstained cell phone, but that was all. Or had he sent me a hand, too? Had I just forced myself not to see it? Or had he sent a hand, too? Had I just forced myself... Forced myself to have no awareness. And then that naked Nanami was something I created? And the real Nanami was the one laying on the ground in front of you with her right hand cut off after she'd been captured by Shogun. You're lying. I'm telling you the truth. Listen to me, Taku. You need to end that delusion right now. Wait. Well, I guess I really am the real Taku, me then. So I'm an artificial human made out of nothing, making another human also out of nothing. What you're doing right now is creating an entire human being out of nothing. Really? Is it really that much? You're using more energy than a nuclear bomb blast. Really? First off. Really? Also, does that what does that then mean about me? Since technically I'm made the same way? What is happening? Oh, right, the coma. That's why you were in a coma for almost an entire week. You may not be aware of it, but you were. One, I would know if I was in a coma. Two, if I had been in a coma for almost a week, I would have, like, pissed and shit all over myself. Also, I would probably smell really bad. And everything smells really nice in here. Like flowers. And H games. Taku. Taku, if you don't stop, there really will be two Nanas in this world. Okay, well if I have the power to make a whole fucking human, could I have them fuse together with both memories and minds? Since technically it's the same person. And what that would do, it was like regenerate the hand that's either attached to the person right now that's floating around. And then Nana, that's on the ground dying of blood loss, would not be dying of blood loss. I don't, I don't know if like I like white mage this shit. Taku, if you don't stop, there really will be two Nanas in this world. And the more you use your power. Am I dying? The more you use your power, the more life you steal away from somebody else. Oh, I'm, I'm killing Taku. The, the, the one in the hospital. Okay. So, you're lying. I'm sorry. This is my fault. For not being able to protect you. But please. This might be hard, but... 
Accept reality. End that delusion. Brother. Don't erase me. If you don't end that delusion right now, I'll kill you. Brother! I knocked Anami's hand away. I was tired of all this, sick of all this shit. I had no idea what to believe. Believe Rimi? Impossible. Believe the Nami that was looking at me and crying? Impossible. Believe the Nami laying on the ground holding a D sword? Impossible. Believe myself? Impossible. All I'd ever wanted was something simple and small. To live in peace. To not have. To not have anybody bother me. To live quietly with my mommy and my sister. That was all I wanted. It was all I ever wished for. Why was I not allowed to this wish? To wish? Was I not even allowed that? Then, all of you can just disappear. This whole world can just disappear. And then I'll live inside my head, inside my delusions. Just me and Nanami. Not a real Nanami or a fake Nanami, just Nanami. <laughs> I. I looked at Nanami's eyes, they were shining, wet with tears. Nanami was looking at me. <laughs> I only need one thing. <laughs> Nanami. And right after I said that. And earthquake. Well, this is concerning. The world shook. The third melt? No! Well, my wish came true. The world was bathed in white and covered everything and blew everything away. Okay. I opened my eyes to see the ceiling of my shipping container. I was lying down. On my bed. Huh? Had I been sleeping, it felt like I had just had a very scary dream. A really, really awful dream. But it was just a dream. It didn't even matter if it was a dream or not real. It didn't matter if this was real or a delusion. There was a weight and a softness at my chest. I looked down and Nanami was there. She was sleeping, resting her head on my chest. Our eyes met. She was looking at me. She was staring. Her eyes were dewy, her cheeks the color of cherry blossoms. Thank you for last night. At first, I didn't know what she meant. For saying you felt the same way I do. It made me happy. Okay? Oh, fuck. It made me happy to have you make love to me. I love you even more than I ever have. Well. Oh, so this was like an H game. Then I accepted the situation much more easily than I thought I would have. Well. Nami looks so cute, so beautiful. She wasn't just my sister, she was a beautiful girl. Okay, well. You really did go the Andy and Lily route, huh? Hope you keep on loving me from now on, okay? I don't even know what to say about the story at this point. We had a heartfelt story, then we had a really depressing story. Now we just have... We have this now. I don't know... I don't... I, I don't really know what the fuck's happening anymore. I even started making this video, making the joke reference. I guess part of me thought the developers of the game wouldn't actually do it. I hope you'll keep on looking. I already read that. What if I said, but, but I refuse? What? In some sort of. I said, my old bad habits coming back, and Nami sat up and pouted. Jeez. I'm being serious, brother. You jerk. And we just have, like, sprites of Andy and Lily from the coffin of Andy and Lily. She got out of bed, I realized I'd made a mistake, and tried to figure out how I should apologize. Only then I realized I was holding something in my hands. I brought my face and realized it was a bangle. It wasn't the one I'd given her before. It was fancier and cuter. It would look much better on her than the last one. I got out of bed. Well, what the fuck is happening? 
Here, Nanami, I got you a present. Huh? Huh? I put the bangle on her right wrist. For some reason, it felt a little embarrassing, like I was giving her a wedding ring. <gasps> wow! What a cute bangle. Is it for me? I nodded. She smiled and looked so happy. Okay. I'll treasure it. Nanami. We're together forever. Right? Huh? What's this about? I want to be together forever. I want to be with you forever, Nanami. Uh, it's not like you have to say something like that. Do you have a fever? Oh, I know. You're teasing me, right? I'm serious. Brother. Oni chan! Do you mean as a sister? Or, um, as a girl? Both. Both? Hmm. Both. Huh? I think that's the first time I heard you say how you feel. I always felt the same way. Is that creepy? It's not actually. It makes me really happy. Well, you were nice enough to tell me how you really felt. So, okay, I guess we can be together. But, on one condition. Okay? Condition? Yeah. Um, she fidgeted a little. Her face was bright red. Okay. She was staring into my eyes. Kiss me. That's what she said. I'd do anything she wanted. I'd made my decision. From now on, it would just be the two of us. I didn't need anything else as long as I had Nanami. That was enough for me. Did we just, like, imagine everyone else out of existence? What is happening? Is that a no? Is it weird for a brother and sister to kiss? Every day, we stray further from the grace of God. I shook my head. No, it's not. Brother! You know, it almost... It almost would be wholesome if it wasn't fucked up. Every day we stray further from the grace of God. I love you. She leapt at me. I kissed my little sister. I could feel her sweet breath. It made me feel so happy, so fulfilled. My love for her was overflowing. But for some reason, it just felt a, felt just a little sad. A hot tear fell down my cheek. Well, I assume Rimi's co- Oh, everyone's dead. Oh my god! Am I? And as it fell, I didn't get to read that! This world was for me and Nanami. I wouldn't let anybody invade it. I had to be the big brother now. Are we falling off a skyscraper at the moment? To protect her no matter what. Is... Is... Are, 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 are we having a coma dream from hitting our head where we are making out with the imaginary version of our sister while the real version of our sister who was dying of blood loss missing a hand and Remy are being flung around on the inside of the container as we fall off of a eight-story skyscraper 
and are about to impact into the asphalt, and all of us will become spaghetti. Also, I feel like I'm really taking away from the fact that the music right now is really awesome. So I do like, I do like the song playing. Like I said, the voice actors and the, even the singers and the actual music, really good. Heck, the ambient sounds, the sound effects, the environmental noises, the art styles story itself, the music itself, the game is really good. Yeah, the soundtrack to this game is pretty awesome. Yeah, I really do like the soundtrack to the game. Why is every ending more depressing or weird than the previous one? Like, it's like they're, you guys are really outdoing yourselves. Great story writing. Daydream. Well, I hope everyone had a good day. Uh, bye.